everyone. This is Dr. Nakhan, clinical psychologist, psychotherapist, speech and language therapist. And I'm Global International Director for Sound of Autism, Arizona, UK. And uh, today, the topic of our, uh, uh, you could say, the session or the discussion is IEP. IEP means Individualized Education Plan. And I have to do this session again because I was requ requested a lot by a lot of people that they missed that because last time the timing was uh, 6 p.m. 6 a.m., sorry. It was 6 p.m. over there. But... Uh, let me start my presentation and uh, I will also share my two or three, um, um, two or three, uh, you could say, I end up education plan with you. So uh, let me start. So basically, who is going to tell me what is IEP? Can somebody tell me about what is IEP? What is your, uh, because this is a discussion forum, it's not just like, I'm presenting something and you have to listen to me. I would like to take your opinion too. Uh, that what is IEP? You can write down in the, in the chat session also about IEP. Ma'am, can I answer? Yes, you can answer. Why not? Yes, Simra. Ma'am, uh, IEP is individual uh, educational plan. For example, uh, we have child of ADHD. Mm -hmm. So we will write uh, what is his present state, mm -hmm. what we are trying to do in his future state. Mm -hmm. uh, so level, can, like he's an intermediate level, like we write this, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I ADHD ka ka koi child hai. Please request so, English. Liye hum... Simra? You need to talk in English because this is oh. for international audience. Oh. Yeah. Right. I told you already. It's okay. No issue. Oh, sure. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, let me think. Then I will answer you. Okay. So you were saying that we have... Uh, you were saying that if suppose we have a child with ADHD. So... Then we are going to think or we are going to assess that child, what is the level of the child. I think that that that, that is what you, you, you were trying to tell me. And uh, what we are going to do about assessing the level. Yes, yes, you can write. Exactly, you're right, Simra, uh, that uh, what is his present state and uh, uh, what about the uh, activities that we are putting, going to put in the IEP? What those activities could be? Yes, you're right. The intervention we will use for better progress. Okay, you, you talk about token economy and uh, reinforcement. These are techniques that we, which we could use for the child. Actually, I'm opening one uh, plan that I have already and then I'm going to start my presentation. Yes, you're very much right that we have, you, you actually just tell about the techniques. Okay, let me, talk, let me start my presentation. Let's open all of these. Okay. <laughs> Individualized educational plan. Okay. Sorry about this. So let's talk about what is IEP, what is individualized education plan. And you are very much right, Simra, that this is a plan basically we develop about uh, for the child. And mm -hmm. over in that, uh, we make sure that the child present level is mentioned in that. And I will talk about what things you need to, uh, to keep in the mind. Either you are a parent, either you are a child, uh, either you are, uh, I mean, you're a child, take care, or you're a professional. What the what things you need to keep mm -hmm. in your mind before thinking about IEP or before asking the pair, uh, asking the therapist? Because I just got a call uh, before this session uh, in the evening, uh, like that was around six o'clock. Uh, a mother asked me that she's taking her child somewhere and they are not telling what the child is doing. Okay. What the child is doing basically, and what is is that? What is the child level? Okay. Yes, you're right. Uh, you can uh, add this in uh, also, Simra, uh, Simra, that 
we can add uh, some break in ADHD if a child has ADHD or we can give him some uh, some some time out in the sense that he, the child can go outside and the child can uh, uh, take around and come back. Uh, this could work for ADHD. So the plan is a basically program that is devised to ensure that child with identified disability, it could be any disability, it could be intellectual disability, it could be ADHD, it could be autism, it could be learning disability, it could be physical disability, it could be any form of disability. And if the child is going toward elementary school because the, the main thing that is going to help the child is in the school because those plans are, uh, we, we also add a lot of activities for the child in, this, uh, in the home environment also. But the main help which a child could take from that IP is, is, is in the school environment because a lot of uh, parents say that or teachers say that uh, we don't have that much time. We have very little time. We have very limited time. In limited time, we have to make sure that if we have 30 students in the class, then how we are going to talk to them or how we are going to teach them something because we don't have a time to run all the time. If you, if you talk about ADHD child or all the time behind that child and make him sit in that chair. So that is what is going to help the parents this is, this is what is going to help the, uh, the classroom and, and the teacher. And this is how a child is going to able to, or the child would be able to get education according to his need. And uh, these specialized instruction are related to services as well. If uh, a child needs extra reading time, so it will be mentioned over there. If the child needs extra writing time, so it will be mentioned in the IEP. So that is what the IEP document is. And that is beneficial for parents, that is beneficial for teachers, and that is beneficial for child as well for a smooth procedure. And I was uh, looking toward age, what, what age a child could have an IEP. So the age was mentioned from three years to 21 years. So the planner is also required if a child grow up from that, uh, from that age. Yeah. Next thing is, let's talk about the, why the IEP is important. What are the goals for IEP? What a need, teacher need to understand? What a parent need to understand? What a professional need to understand that? What is the current level of the performance? Child can write or not. Child can sit in the chair or not. Child can child is paying attention or not. I'm talking about all di uh, dis different additional special needs over there. Let's uh, assess first that what is the current level of the performance and we can over here, a professional can apply tests to understand what is the level of the child. It, it includes different kinds of testing. It, uh, it could also include psychodiagnostic assessment testing also. So the child, the parents or the therapist understand what is the level of the child. Second thing is specific and measurable goal. If you are going to work on something, then the goal which we are setting for the child should be measurable. For example, that if we say that we are going to um, make the uh, child uh, at sitting span for 10 minutes in one month, or two months, let's say in two months, or maybe in one month. So this, we could say that this is an achievable goal. Of, and if we say that, that we are going to uh, make that child sit in class for 30 minutes without moving anything, then we could say that, that that might look like abstract kind of thing. And this is very difficult to achieve that goal with a child that who have a lot of energy. I mean, he, he have that much energy that he cannot sit. Uh, I mean, two or three people have to, sit around him so that the child works. So it means that when we are going to make any goal in the child, in the IEP, we need to understand that the goal should be measurable. Yes, you are very much right, the smart goal. This is what I'm, uh, my next slide would be about, about the smart goal, okay. Like I said, the specific and measurable goal, the next thing is service delivery, all need to support each other. And the point which is more important than the IEP, IEP is what, but importance is, how you're going to collaborate, how teachers are going to collaborate with parents and how parents are going to collaborate with therapists. And this is trika. Like three people are involved in this procedure. Parents, teachers, and the therapist. And the child is in between that. So that is why the IEP is important. And that is going to help the child. If the child have IEP, but he don't have the team, he don't have the resources, or the school don't have the resources, then uh, uh, with best of the best IEP, the child is not going to because if a child needs, for example, say speech therapy on daily basis for 20 minutes and the child is uh, getting speech therapy for 10 minutes in one week, it means that the child is not going to get any kind of improvement in, in his problem. Okay. So the next thing is that, uh, and we need to collaborate over there.
so like you to uh, already uh, talk about smart goal what does a smart goal mean smart goal means that the goal should be specific for example sitting span means sitting span you cannot put the sitting span activity into uh, for example uh, we cannot put uh, you know um, you could say uh, sitting span activity into speech thing if uh, you just start doing uh, some kind of thing if you uh, sometimes you know therapist like for example if i am working with a child then i do a lot of things in combination with a child but that is a separate thing that why i'm doing that because i'm using a lot of because my approach is mostly like sensory approach i'm using sensory approach and i'm trying that the child start learning from all the senses the child use all his senses to learn something so that's why i would use music that's why i would use picture that's why i will use a car that's why i will use an object but the thing is that but my goal over there is that the child learn the speech but if the my goal is to child learn the fine motor skill and i am just showing the child and child is not child is not moving his hand it means that my goal is not specific and that is not going to work for that child so we need to keep that in mind measurable measurable means for example when i talk about a child that we need to uh, to develop his uh, sitting span for 10 minutes in one month or two months you could say in two months so it means that that goal could be could, could be measurable but sometimes usme uh, it it will uh, lapse could come in that also so even then we need to understand that the goal should be measurable for example we say that okay we are making a goal for a child that in one month we are going to teach him the first set of the phonics the first two phonics i'm talking about two set of jolly phonics few could children could not few children could not learn but we are making that goal maybe the child is achieving or not that also depend on the level of the child and either it's attainable or not maybe a person who have might have adhd could learn that that two set of phonics um, set jolly phonics set in one month but what about a child who have no speech who have poor speech who have no sound who have autism who have other uh, language disability or language problem so it means that that goal is not attainable for that child and that is not a smart goal and the child is not able to learn anything over there rather you are pressurizing the child and sometimes if we start pressurizing the child the child the child start backfire and uh, the child don't uh, you could say uh, show attention or you could say show interest in the thing that we are working with the child next thing is re result oriented means that we have to understand that the goal which we make for the child is result oriented like like i told you that if i am working on i am i am doing an activity that is for speech like i am singing the child i am rhyming with the child and and in my goal is to uh, develop the child fine motor skill that is not a result oriented thing that is not uh, appropriate goal for that child but that is not appropriate activity for that thing actually it's not even about goal it's not is not appropriate activity so we need to understand that activity that is appropriate for that child or not we need to keep that thing in mind time bound so time bound means when we are working with those children uh, who have uh, different kind of disabilities who have autism who have adhd who are neurodivergent children who are who 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 are neurodiverse population actually for them we need to keep in mind that the, that we are making uh, some goals for them and that also include time management for those children because some of them are have poor executive function and those who have attended my executive function uh, workshop they already know that why executive functions are very important and those individual those children and those adults have poor executive function so we need to keep in the mind that if a child achieve something if we have so then we need, we need to make sure that it's it's not it's a it's the um, uh, you know the collaboration of therapist and the uh, teacher and the parent that we are working on this thing parent should also work on that thing and teacher should also work on that that, that is the uh, importance of ip that everybody is working on same thing to achieve the goal for the betterment of the child so time bond means that everybody is working on same thing and uh, if we have that we are going to achieve that goal in one month then we have to do if the child is not able to achieve that goal in one month then let's not let's just not get uh, you know hard on that child sometimes child learn on their own space sometimes they have some issues sometimes sometimes they have seasonal problems sometimes they have other kind of issue but that is a separate thing you know the thing is that we need to keep on our mind that we need to be very 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 clear and uh, result oriented when you when we are talking about ip of a child next is let's talk about some important component of ip what should be the important component of ip current level of the child the child can talk or not or before talk sounds are present or not what is the level of child understanding that is important thing the goal that we are making should be annual or year goal but 
that could be difficult for some people to achieve those those goals or what we could do over here we need to um break down all the goals in small pieces in small attainable pieces so the goal which might look like that it is not attainable it might look like it's a very big thing to achieve but when we start doing putting that small thing in that and we we have that that small goals that it is going to help that child and it is also helping the parents it's also helping the teacher it's also helping the therapist who is a remedial therapist over there or uh, so called a shadow teacher uh, i mean uh, a lot of parents have shadow teacher hire for their child and those who are they, and uh, those are sometimes you know uh, um, they don't have even have appropriate uh, education for that or you could say they don't get the idea that what we are going to do over here do we need to sit the child all the time what do we need to do that if they have something in the in the reading then i think there will be very important now track the progress how are we going to track the progress child is um, for example uh, you just did set of one phonics and now you move to the next phonics but don't forget about last time you don't need to uh, you know uh, uh, do everything every day but you you need to revise the thing with the child just to refresh his memory and the second thing is just to make the muscular memory of that child we need to track his pro progress so uh, all of start asking the things from the child that what is this do you know this uh, do you know this and just you know in a fun way in different way so we can just not academic way but we can use rhyming way we can use a play way so over here you can do any kind of technique to track the progress special education is very important like i told you over here who, who could work over with the child and that is very important because you have iep documents the parent have iep documents the school have that document in their hand what they're going to do now over here the special education mean a shadow teacher the special educator mean educational educator mean the therapist who the school have hired for the, that child it could be a speech therapist if a child is speech therapy behavior therapist if the child is behavior therapy child have behavior problem or a remedial therapist it 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 is according to child own needs then service duration is also very important like in start i gave you an example of a case and that actually happened the child was a autistic child and um, uh, they were paying a very huge amount in that school and when i ask uh, uh, what is the duration of child speech therapy and they say that the child is taking a 10 minutes therapy in one week and they uh, because i said 10 uh, minutes in one week is very 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 less like the child need more speech therapy more sessions for speech therapy more time duration for speech therapy and they said that school is saying that the child have poor command following poor attention span poor poor sitting span so we cannot work on that we are working on those things first and then we are we are going to shift the child towards speech therapy so it means that this is what is going to happen with that child now classroom integration is very important when you are doing some therapy that you do that in in the in the your speech room or you have some kind of room that is allocated to you but you need to bring back that child to the classroom and you need to make him sit with the class and do the activities but other activities are doing and that is a very important aspect because a lot of parents say that or even a uh, therapist asks this question from me that the child is doing everything when they are with they are alone with us when they are in a specific, specific therapy room because that is a design a place for the child and it is this is a design environment structured environment which is not changing that remains same for for so long it's not changing but the classroom environment is different so making comfortable the child with the classroom environment we have to help the child to integrate in the classroom also by while doing all the other activity because it's not just speech and uh, uh, sitting in the class or writing down something it's about the child is participating in classroom or not the child is doing work or not the child is uh, participating in uh, circle time or not so it's very important over here then assessment so assessment is very important and time to time uh, uh, doing the assessment of the child either the child is um, uh, achieving you're able to achieve the goal or not the child is speaking or not if the child is not speaking then what you need to do you need to change the strategy you need to change the uh, uh, maybe the time or you could say maybe you need to change the equipment that you're using for the child maybe you need to change your own strategy or your own way to work with that child and then is the, the thing is transition important adaptation adaptation that means that those children who have poor executive function those who are with adhd autism and even other children are, whenever you ask go to uh, them to go to some uh, other place then the child start crying for example uh, in the morning a mother message me she said that my uh, my daughter uh, don't go anywhere she start crying i think she's afraid of something so that was the she, the child was uh, was uh, having problem in transition so that was the reason she was not able to do something and that was the reason she was she was not able to uh, um, uh, go to new place to go to new uh, market on or you know she was not even going anywhere because she 
she was not uh, familiar with the environment or the parents were not able to make her comfortable with the environment because she used to uh, stay in her home all the time so that is all from my presentation now i am going to uh, share a, a a plan with you of one of my child who was uh, 7.1 years old and those are few things about the child. Um, I just cut down his name just because of confidentiality issue. The document is also uh, to say that it is according to that child because uh, the child was uh, the thing is that that uh, okay. Meanwhile, do you have any question? You can ask. Uh, Ma'am, IP should be revised in six month time duration. Uh, revision means what? I mean, from revisions, you mean that the child have to achieve a child achieve that thing or not? Uh, can you please uh, explain your question? Because revision means that you are revising a thing with the child, or you have to adapt that again. From revision, you this is what you mean. You can uh, tell me in the, uh, if somebody have any question, they can ask me. Uh, then I will share the uh, planner with you. Okay. Ma'am, IP plan, we should revise it or not. Yes, we have to. You know, like I told you, when if such, uh, uh, from revision, what we could do? A revision would be like, if the things are not working for the child, then what we, we, we are going to do? We have to change our plan. We have to change our strategies. That is important thing to change the strategy for the child. And from revision, if you means that um, behavior therapy, a prerequisite. Behavior therapy is a separate thing, a speech therapy is a separate thing. We need to understand this thing. And if people think that, first you need to work on behavior, then speech, then that's a wrong assumption. You have to work on everything simultaneously. It's not like that. First work on behavior and then speech. Every area is important in child life. Either it's behavior therapy, either it's speech therapy, either it's fine motor skills, it's broad, gross motor skills, either it's movement, either it's, uh, it's coloring or whatever you're saying, whatever you're doing, even socialization, social integration, because we have to teach the child age appropriate activities. So it's not like that. Six months you take behavior therapy, then after six months speech therapy. We all understand this. I We all know that early intervention is important because over there we are going to uh, bridge the gap between the parent, uh, the, the child and the other children. That's what the disorder is that we have. This is what we could do as a therapist. So we have to bridge the gap. And what we could do about that? To maximum give support to the child so that the, uh, the, uh, so, so the gap is lessened and the child go to that situation or that environment as soon as the child can. So that is what it is. So I would not say that that is because uh, every area is important. Speech is important, behavior is important. O occupation is important, physiotherapy is important. If a child needs um, um, uh, fine motor skill is poor, the child cannot open anything. The child cannot hold something. And the child is autistic. So I would say, no, he's autistic. People say that for autism, speech is important. So then the child uh, the, the child only don't on, does not need just speech. He also needs therapies because he have other needs too. So every area is equally important. Okay. Uh, yes, we can. Yes, you're right. That, that both can go side by side. And from revision, what we would, what we would say that the IP that we made that was after assessment. So if the child achieve those goals, then we can add more goals into that, or we can add the advanced form of the uh, the, uh, the the goals in that therapy. For example, if the child achieve three letters, um, two set of the phonics, the jolly phonics, then we will move to the other set. You know, because uh, there are a few words that you teach in the start, then later on, then later on. So you can move to the next. So that's how you can say that. If the child is able to open something, open or close something, then what are you going to do? Then you're going to take the child to open a, a, a bottle cap. So that's how you're going to advance that. Is there any success story the child with mild autism, medium age, he was able to mask the symptoms in what, uh, in what, what capacity? I know a lot of story. I'm talking to those people all the time on daily basis. Those who are adult with ADHD or ASD. 
it's not about there are uh, a lot of story is available about those So there are, if somebody say that there are a lot of success stories, so-called people say success, it's not even about success. It's about did the children learn to manage themselves? Yes, they can learn. And I'm talking to those people on daily basis, those neurodivergent people, those who, who, who were diagnosed as a child. And there are even a lot of individuals, there are a lot of adults who were never diagnosed and they're doing their life the way other people are doing. So we are afraid of those things because people make is it is a stigma. Which is which is it's not a stigma. Thank you so much, Dr. Shugupta, for joining us. Okay, Dr. Shugupta, I am showing one uh, child okay. IP to them. Then uh, we, uh, I will ask few things from you, and there are a few questions also. You, you can read those questions and you can answer those questions too. I already them, answered them already, but uh, I'm going to uh, show the. Uh, can you see? I don't think so. You can see now. I'm going to show. Uh, okay, so the need of the child was. He, the child attained the speech, the child was able to write, the child was able to read, the child was the child knew the phonics. So that that is his advanced form of uh, you could say uh, I okay. What are the things in that? Okay. The first is in is in literacy. So uh, that is a the different thing because for my literacy, my target was different, matching they it depends on you how what kind of activity you add in that. So my like my goal was reading and uh, to have a tangible speech uh, compliance. He have some issues, uh, so make him good vocabulary. So that was my goal. So this is what I added him in literacy, achievement in literacy. So it is a uh, it's targeted goal, learning improvement, desired outcome like it's mentioned over here. Then barriers. What were the barriers? What was the issue of the child? Then the other is, uh, but there, the, the child has strengths too. So we use those strengths in our therapeutic process. And uh, uh, achievement, it means that what studies you could use over there, I asked them to, uh, to help that child or read the child the book at home because the child was able to read, the child was able to blend, the child was able to make sound, uh, combine two sounds, and he was also able to read um, the, the sight works. So that's, that's why his, uh, his, his IP was at once. So that, there's a few things that which I, uh, write just down to what I'm going to use for that child. Okay. Sometimes his laptop scares me. Okay. So the next would be, I think, mathematics. And uh, there's a, a lot of areas, okay, that is about literacy. It means writing. So the child was able to write, but he have still have poor fine motor skill, or the child need a lot of, you could say, uh, uh, motivation for doing that. So. Uh, for pencil, he, he was able to hold the pencil, but he was not motivated that much because still he need a lot of, uh, and the child was uh, more like he got uh, tired so easily by writing only one page. So the goal was just to divide the work in three different uh, time period so that the child can complete his work also and he also take the part, part in the other classroom activities. So the next is in the number and the child know the counting, the child know oral counting, the child was very good in, uh, you know, counting things. So my next goal was to give him the concept of plus and minus and things like that. These are his goals in, I guess, uh, yes, personal and socialization. The child was able to help him himself in doing a lot of things, but the, the child still child need uh, some help in few things. So this is according to, uh, to know that like, uh, eating his food, finishing his food, drinking water, and uh, just uh, advance the step of uh, doing self-help skill. It's more like that. And there's a lot of skill I mentioned in that. And uh, mm -hmm. okay, so Dr. Shugurta, we would like you to talk about, I think, uh, uh, I just, I'm just giving you a reminder because after that I'm going to uh, shift to you. What, uh, what, what is the role of parents and therapist in implementing the IEP? Like everybody is important, school is important, parents are important, and therapist is important. I already talked about the role of therapists and the role of parents. I already talked about that. You can also talk about that too, but uh, can you tell us about the role of the, uh, the school in that? 
I just uh, let me just finish that and then I will uh, ask you. And meanwhile, you can ask question two. Those who are watching. Okay. So this is okay. So this is in the number like I already told you. Uh, I think it's again working. So that's it. That is a receptive language. The child the language was good. So my goal was to go to an expressive language that was also good. But then, but what was the next goal? To work on questions: what, why, when, and where. To give him the uh, the understanding of the comprehension and the generalizability, so that he can initiate social talk. So that was his goal over here. Okay, so social capability is like I told you. It's repeating itself. That is socialization, which is very important. And from socialization, that uh, the child was not happy when other come people come inside. So it's more like that. And uh, we have only six minutes remaining. And I would uh, request Dr. Shugufta, can you please uh, tell us, because we only have six minutes. And after that, I have some, I have some question too. Uh, I wanted to say, I was uh, busy uh, with my Mamujan because she was in dialysis. I was with him. I just reached at home. Uh, I'm sorry for everyone due to my late. Uh, I want to discuss. Uh, I don't know what is what was my topic, but I want to discuss IEP program for aut uh, autism. Uh, for children with autism and for children with uh, certain other disabilities, this uh, act uh, mandates that certain of an IEP plans and programs. Each IEP is diagnosed for one children. Its purpose is to meet that child's specific special education needs. It's his goal and objectives and describes what services a child will receive as part of their special education program. Uh, and I also want to tell you some uh, more things like uh, we can, uh, who needs an IEP plan? Uh, students who are eligible for special education services and need an IE plan, why? There are many reasons that students could be eligible. Some common condition include, which type of condition? Attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, autism, cognitive challenges, developmental delays, emotional disorders, hearing problems, hearing problems, learning problems, physical disabilities, speech or language impairment, vision problems. A few, uh, you can say that uh, if uh, you diagnose or uh, you can, uh, if you understand uh, your child have these problems, you can go for IE plan, an expert of IE planner. Uh, we have many therapists in our country, good therapists, you can join it. <clears throat> this is my few minutes okay. answer. Okay. Uh, uh, uh... There's a question, I think we uh, respond to that question and I posted that video also. She said that, what is the benefit of formal assessment? And is that assessment important? Without assessment, you cannot make even an IEP for assessment. For IEP, assessment is a first step. Psychodiagnostic assessment is must for diagnosing the child and making the educational plan for that child. So that is the first step. Without assessment, you cannot do anything. I mean, you cannot make how you are going to understand that the child have poor uh, fine motor skill. How are you going to understand that the child have poor vocabulary? Uh, yeah, the child is receptive vocabulary is poor or the expressive vocabulary is poor. For that, we have to go for formal testing, either uh, formal and formal, I would say both. But formal is also very important because in formal, in, in formal assessment, it, it includes your behavior, observation, clinical observation, or you might uh, watch some video of the child. So it's more like that. And in formal assessment, you, you need some test for that child. And that is very important without uh, testing, uh, without assessment, uh, the, you, you will never understand that what the child needs. 
and what is his wants what skills he have what his skills he have like lacking what is his mental age what is his physical uh, or what is his age for his fine motor skill what is the child age for uh, communication or language so it is important and if somebody has another question they can ask me i'm sure mahin you will uh, uh, get the uh, okay okay we are take, taking all type of um, it's not even about labeling i mean people are so afraid of labeling uh, uh, it means that let me tell you something when you go to a doctor and the doctor what the doctor ask you go for a test go for blood test do you afraid to go for those blood test do you go you do, are you afraid to go for those scanning you never hesitate for that thing after that they diagnose you something that yes you have this kind of yes you have hypertension you might have diabetes so when you are doing those things then why people have issue in or i would say that why people are so um, uh, hesitant for those assessment procedures that is important it is the you could say over here we are talking about a child child have future a child have a whole life why we are going to play with a child life when we are not serious about that so being serious is very important over here so i think that's all for today thank you so thank you so much dr shubhakta and uh, our time is finished thank you so much for your time thank you so much everybody for uh, uh, coming today and see you all in our support group which will be in urdu today was in english thank you so much bye bye allah hafiz